Okay, I'm reading you from the Bible Story, Volume 4, my, uh, by author S. Maxwell. And my book has David and Goliath on the front. And we are at, since I'm reading the story, we are at Part 3, Story 7, Building in Silence. It took Solomon four years to gather all the material needed to build for the building of the, of the temple and seven more years to put it all together. One reason why the preparation took so long was that every stone and every piece of metal or wood was cut to size or molded in molded to shape before it was brought to the building site. As a result, not a sound was to be heard while the temple was taking shape. There was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was be, it was in while it was in building. Just as silent as God works in nature, causing the grass to grow and the trees to bud, bloom, and bear fruit, fruit uh, to bear fruit without a sound. So noiseless was his temple built. Perhaps God intended it to be a lesson to his people to remind them how he plans to build his church on earth, not by loud, noisy methods, but by a quiet working of his Holy Spirit upon the hearts of men and women. Uh, I'm Pentecostal or assembly. Is we're not quiet. <laughs> Some boys and girls should remember this when they go to church. Uh, yeah, but I'm from the faith that likes to holler and jump and do all that stuff. All the good, all the blessings and stuff that David did. Okay. When he was so happy. Okay. Let's get back to the story. As the stone was laid on stone, each fitted perfectly in its appointed place. The building gradually took shape. No doubt many fathers and mothers of Jerusalem and nearby villages brought their children to see the great sight and gaze in wonder as the silent building builders worked. For years, long before David's death, they had heard stories about this gorgeous, this glorious temple, how it was growing before their eyes and from the huge size of blocks of stones being used for the foundation they could see it going to be even more wonderful than they had dreamed in size the temple was to be twice as large as the tabernacle Moses built in the wilderness twice Moses' tabernacle was 30 cubits long, 50 feet, and Solomon's temple, 60 cubits, 110 feet. Oh, that's big. Mm -hmm. Moses' tabernacle was 10 cubits wide, 18 feet, and Moses' and Sol okay, Moses' tabernacle was 10 cubits wide, 18 feet. And Solomon's temple was 20 cubits wide, 36 feet. Moses' tabernacle was 10 cubits high, 18 feet. And Solomon's temple was 20 units high, 36 feet. Just as the wilderness tabernacle had been divided into two parts, the holy place and the most holy place, or the holy of holies, so was the temple. 
All the walls and the ceilings were lined with cedar and then and the floor with planks of fir, so that there was no stone seen. Then all the wood was covered with gold. Solomon overlaid also the house, the beam, the post, the walls thereof, and the door thereof with gold, and engraved cherubims on the walls. I was condensing again. And he made a veil of blue, purple, and crimson, and, and fine linen, and brought cherubims uh, thereon. So it had a lot of angels, a little, yeah, a whole lot of angels there. Cherubims are basically angels, anyway. While the Holy of Holies, within the Holy of Holies, he placed two cherubims carved from olive wood to be laid with to be overlaid with gold whose wings touch the walls on either side oh olive wood and overlaid with gold and whose wings touch the walls on each side oh, that's a big oh, those are big angels Okay. Um, in the holy place, he put a new golden altar of incense, new golden tables for the showbread, and ten golden candlesticks, five of the right side and five on the left. How beautiful it must have been inside, with the bright colors of the veil or curtain, and the twinkling lights of the tin candlestick, all flickering, all reflected on the polished gold of the walls, floors, and ceiling. That's a lot of shiny, shiny gold. Okay, I just imagine that. It, yeah, it'd be pretty bright. Outside the temple, a bronze altar, 36 feet square and 8 feet high, was built for the offering of sacrifices. At the southern southeast corner was a was the Molten Sea by Haram, which was really a bathing pool for the priests. Besides this, there were 10 were ten bronze lake lavers or washing places for cleansing and sac the sacrifice before they were offered. In other words, they had to wash the animal. At last, seven years after the work was started, the building was finished. The plans that God had given to David had been carried out to the letter. Everything from the laying of the foundation stones to the polish of the last bronze pomegranate had been done as well as men could do. Everyone from Solomon to the humblest stone cutter had done his best to make it the most glorious yeah, glorious temple ever built. Now all that remained remained was the dedication. Would God accept this building as his own and honor with his presence as he did as he had honored the tabernacle in the wilderness? And it has the illustration of, of somebody them working and the people watching. There. They're working and the kids and everybody watching as they work. Okay, and that was the end of story part three, story seven. Story seven. Um, I'm gonna take the break and then we're gonna, I'm gonna read the next. See you in a minute.